I think one of the really interesting things uh, is that science can actually be a form of diplomacy. So I actually had the honor of being science envoy for the Department of State and actually doing some of that. Uh, and because most countries actually value sort of science, uh, when it comes, you know, as part of a diplomatic overture, uh, it gets it gets really valued, and it it can sort of what's the word? It's, it can sort of uh, spark things either sooner or spark things that might not otherwise happen, uh, and and essentially create a relationship that is beyond science because it's also between the two nationalities, uh, which very quickly vanish into the background. And um, can you think of a particular solution where you used it as a tool uh, to solve uh, a challenge? Well, I mean, an example was when uh, I was science envoy, the ambassador to Peru was deeply concerned about the illegal gold mining in the Amazon. So he invited the essentially the senior cabinet officials of Peru to do an overflight in Madre de Dios and then sit down and have lunch with me and discuss what to do about it. And it was, you know, it was a really amazing event because it's one thing to see an image, it's another thing to actually do an overflight and see how extensive it is and and how actually the gold miners themselves are almost the victims of the whole uh, phenomenon. And then we sat down at lunch and I basically said, you know, you can do individual things about this particular problem and it is a very big problem. Uh, but basically it's only going to work if it's addressed at the level of the cabinet because no individual cabinet department is capable of solving this on their own. And uh, how do you think that challenges within biodiversity uh, could benefit from uh, international scientific collaboration? And can you identify any particular areas uh, where that is the case? Between well, you know, to begin with on biological diversity, no country has the expertise to, including the United States or even UK, has the expertise to identify all the different kinds of organisms that occur within their own borders, right? So it is from the beginning, it has to be an international collaboration. And then when you get to, you know, complex questions, uh, you may find that the one person in the world who understands some socioeconomic piece of it uh, is in some far distant country. And either you, you know, hope to actually meet them in person sometime, or you get on Skype or something like that and start having those uh, kinds of conversations uh, on the internet. And here in this summit, we work with young people or future leaders that we refer to in the last, uh, who are between 18 and 32. And uh, what uh, challenges and opportunities uh, do you think there are to working with this age group on uh, coming up with innovations to solve these challenges? So I think one of the really exciting things about Shaping Horizons is in fact this younger generation um, who, who really embraced the opportunity. Uh, they weren't shy, which was great. Um, and so they were having real conversations, you know, with senior scientists and amongst themselves and across nationalities. Uh, and they will be different because of that for the rest of their lives. And to what extent uh, do you think that uh, something like Shaping Horizons can uh, have a lasting effect on creating these um, diplomatic uh, ties that could lead to uh, scientific collaboration? Well, you know, because science is inherently an international exercise, when young scientists uh, have this kind of opportunity, it just it gives them a real boost uh, in the direction that they probably would get to later on. And uh, if you could uh, give 
a final piece of advice to the people that have been participating in the conference? What would you tell them? So my final piece of advice is that science is incredibly important. It's also fun. It's also inherently an international exercise. And by embracing it, you will have a wonderful trajectory for the rest of your life. And uh, for you, uh, from a more uh, personal perspective, uh, what was it that made you accept the invitation to come here and uh, speak? Well, I accepted the invitation, one, because it was Cambridge, and two, because it was young people, right? And, you know, young people hold the future of the world in their hands. Well, thank you so much for answering these questions. Mm -hmm.